On the fourth day, the route will take us back on the airline rail trail for 10 miles. Then the rest will be on pavement. We will go through towns of Hampton, Canterbury, Lisbon, and Norwich to name a few. Let's hope there aren't any surprises on this ride. All right, it is day four. Whoops. <coughs> of our tour of Connecticut. Um, you could probably hear. I am still feeling not 100% today. Uh, although, um, yesterday when we were riding, I was really, um, I was pretty exhausted. All those days, this past few days of riding has really taken a toll on my body. And uh, I think the reason why I didn't feel 100% yesterday on the ride was because I didn't sleep well the night before. So uh, yeah, last night I slept much better. We're staying at this um, little inn that's attached to the owner's house and uh, it's a cute little cottage with a nice view of the lake here show you guys yeah it's uh, I don't know what lake this is but it is really peaceful to wake up to in the morning uh, anyway I am <laughs> Eating my leftovers from last night's dinner, burgers and fries, because I, I am feeling a little better today now that I got enough sleep. Um, it was a really uh, good sleep last night, very quiet here, and I also learned that probably it's helpful to find a place where they have a uh, air conditioning unit because the air conditioning really does help with um, helping me sleep better and both of us it helps to bo both of us to sleep better yesterday's ride was about 60 was it 63 miles yeah 63 63 miles with only 2,000 feet of elevation gain so relatively flat uh, for the amount of miles and one would think would be going faster but we unfortunately were not going faster because I just Mentally, I wasn't there, and I try to get moving faster, but every time I do above zone two, I just was not feeling great. So we kind of eased up on the power. Our power yesterday was only 85 watts average. My power was only 85 watts average for the entire five hour duration. So it took us a lot longer to, to get here than what it would take for us to ride a 60 mile with 2,000 feet of elevation gain ride. I said on, on Strava, I called it our, our first five hour recovery ride. Yeah. If there is such a thing as, as a five hour recovery ride. Um, we rode about 40 miles of our 60 mile ride on the airline trail. And it was it's a, such a beautiful trail. And they did such a great job with connecting it all the crossings were safe and well most of the crossings except for the one that we got into Willimantic which is a larger uh, I'm gonna say city of Connecticut and that had a little hairy crossing but nothing that we couldn't handle since we're pretty good with crossings anyway today hopefully now that I got enough sleep um, my motivation for doing this ride is that tomorrow is going to be a rest day uh, so thank goodness and uh, we'll spend a day in Mystic and we'll eat our way through Mystic because that's another thing is that you really have to stay on top of your of your eating because when you fall behind on it it really affects your ride so that's why I'm having my burgers and fries right now so that um, this was my leftover from last night. I feel good, so I'm just going to eat it. Yeah, I was actually feeling much better yesterday, um, at least in terms of my, my d these dizzy spells that I've been having. Um, the first couple of days I was having on and off dizzy spells that 
um, at times got pretty severe. Um, yesterday I didn't have them at all, so I don't know if that's because we were taking it easy or um, I, I did kind of just feel better today starting out the ride and um, I actually liked the the weather yesterday it was a little warm but I prefer it to be warm um, rather than than cool um, and it was a little bit sunny which I like you know wasn't uh, uh, gloomy and uh, and, and rainy um, so I, I guess I was just in a better mood yesterday and I didn't get great sleep the night before either so I, I did feel I did feel a little tired yesterday yesterday in the sense that I wasn't uh, wasn't fully rested didn't get enough sleep but since we were going easy that didn't really affect me that much um, and again I wasn't feeling dizzy so that was a a big plus um, like joy just said you know my motivation for doing this fourth day of riding today is going to be that um, once we get to mystic you know we earn a rest day where we pretty much do nothing but stroll around town and and, and eat so that sounds like fun to me um, so yeah I'm gonna uh, have breakfast pretty soon and then get started on the day. So I am pretty optimistic about today's ride. I am feeling better. Um, I got a good night's rest last night and I really think that's the key. And the kind gentleman, the innkeeper of uh, this cottage that we stayed in, he made us breakfast and it was delicious and I'm a big breakfast person. He made us scrambled eggs, bacon, and uh, home fries. And that was that just hit the spot and uh, in addition to my hamburgers my cheeseburger and fries this morning I think I'm ready to go I think I am well fueled and I'm in a positive and uh, positive energy and so I am really looking forward to riding down to Mystic so just a little history that I learned about Pomfret Pomfret the road that we're in right now you could probably hear the car behind me or the trucks behind me. The road is one of the oldest roads here in Connecticut. It's Route 169, according to the information that I read from their website. And this this cottage that we stayed at, let me show you again one more time. This has been around in their family since the 1700s. And uh, they purchased it from the Native Americans and they've had it in the family, uh, his wife's family for many 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 years now and you could tell actually inside it's very rustic very charming yeah it is um a gorgeous day also at least in the shade it's been pretty nice i can't guarantee it's going to be nice out in the sun all right we're gonna make a right turn you want me to go first or you want to go first? Um, you can go first. I'm recording.
your rear one isn't. The ride from the inn allowed us to appreciate the landscape this town has to offer. It's hilly, but lined with beautiful homes and schools. Yeah. We enjoyed riding through Pomfret School's campus with its buildings draped with vines that crawled its way up to the roof, softening its hard edges. That's what I was trying to say, but it was there's too much wind. You couldn't hear me. It was like okay. The, the left turn was like when we were on started going down the hill. So that's why like I don't think you could hear me when I was trying to tell you that I saw arrows on the left. We found ourselves distracted looking around that we missed a turn. Luckily, I said we can connect the rail trail if we keep going straight. Yeah, yeah right where that guy's going. or bike touring is that it is an excuse to eat whatever you want because you need the calories in order to get you from day to day so uh, we were just talking about how like we eat things that we normally would not eat um, like just now I had the Milano cookies these are the the dark chocolate cookies with a little with a with the chocolate in the center there oh my god these are so good and I also the house that we stayed at, or the cottage that we stayed at, um, had all these snacks, so I got Chips Ahoy. So, um, I, I was factoring uh, eating four of these Milano cookies, which is equivalent to 240 calories per hour, uh, and then also my electrolyte mix.
After we hopped off the rail trail, we were met with pavement, which soon turned rough and cracked. Then, what almost looked like a dead end, a trail seemed to lead the way out. Go over there, I think, I guess. We entered a trail, but it quickly turned into a ruddy course meant for mountain biking. We jumped off our bikes and decided to walk this section, like other off-roading experiences we've had in previous days. Yeah. That's a great idea. At least you can carry yours. What is this? Can we go around it? Okay. Over here, actually, honey. I found a... Go check the ticks later. Finally, the trail ended and we got back on the pavement. Despite riding on smooth tarmac, nothing can stop the pain radiating from our bottoms. 
Every micro crack from the pavement reminded us of the miles we've ridden since the first day. But the great thing about doing a bike packing trip is that you can stop as many times as you want. So that helped us immensely to relieve the pressure on the saddle. Stopped here for a little bit of reprieve from being on our butt. Gosh, sitting on these, uh, riding, just sitting on the saddle for that long, it does get to you. So mentally, I think we're still pretty good. Physically, we're still really good. It's just that our buttocks are sore as heck from all the miles that we put in. So yeah, just taking a break here under, it's like a corner of a road under some shaded area and uh, just drinking and eating. And then hopefully in a couple of miles, we will hit our, our first stop so that we can, uh, you know, re uh, just replenish water and all that. Yeah, feeling feeling good again today in terms of uh, no dizziness so far and physically feeling, uh, we are feeling tired. I think we're both, we're both have some fatigue in the legs, um, but mentally feel okay. Um, and the legs really feel okay um, just to do, you know, to do low power is, is no problem um, to just keep pedaling. Um, but yeah, it's just our butts are so, so incre incredibly sore. It's, it's getting so uncomfortable and um, I can't wait till we're in Mystic. Just so, I'm looking, I can't believe that as much as I like riding, I'm looking forward to being off the bike for a day just to give my butt a break. We were both in good spirits as the sun beamed down on us and the warmth of its UV rays boosted our moods. The road took us through quiet neighborhoods, country roads, and busy streets. We welcomed whatever came our way as long as there were no more hike-a-bike sections. Oh, and having wide bike lanes also helped. about 46.4 miles into the ride and 9.3 miles to go woohoo so that means that uh, we'll be arriving to our destination in mystic uh, oh yeah if you guys are wondering i have these this device right here um, you could probably see, no, it's actually better to see it on this side. Um, this is a Senna Pi, and it allows Jason and I to communicate with one another, especially when you have like busy traffic and you can't really hear each other. Um, we used to have the Senna Bluetooth helmets. Um, we don't have that, any, well, we still have it, but we decided not to use that anymore because it just doesn't have enough ventilation, and this is the laser uh, I think a Z1 MIPS helmet and uh, has plenty of ventilation and there's also an aero shell that comes with it and um, on days where you want well I use it not to be aero or anything but on rainy days or on cold cold days where I want my my head to be warm uh, that little shell does help even though I look kind of silly with it yeah so this one allows us to communicate similar to the helmet the only downside with this is it doesn't um, last as long as the Bluetooth helmet. I think this is up to six hours of runtime. Sometimes we'd have to make sure that we turn it off and other times we just make sure that we have a power bank, which we've I've been carrying a power bank anyway, just to make sure that the Wahoo is charged and um, my phone is charged and um, other electronics that need to be charged. Anyway.
clear on the right after this uh, Cadillac. Finally, we arrived at our destination in Groton, which is just a mile down the road from downtown Mystic. We were relieved to know that we have a rest day tomorrow. Hi. That's 180. I hit my max power probably on the last, right at the end. Yeah. 